AEW was formed in 2019, and whether you like to admit it or not, their existence has absolutely changed modern wrestling. But in AEW's short history, they have not been shy of controversy, and in this video, I'm going to be recapping some of the controversies AEW has been through. Welcome to the AEW Incidents, I'm Gregor Topton Wrestling, and happy Valentine's Day. There isn't a reason I've released it on this day, it's just kind of ended up like this. Let's hit 1,500 likes and get right into the video. On the July 22nd, 2020 episode of AEW Dynamite, Simon Gravara returned to AEW having been involved in his own controversy himself in regards to past comments he made about Sasha Banks. He would return to the company and resume his feud with Matt Hardy, whom he had been feuding with before his suspension. This would lead to a match between the two at All Out 2020 in a Broken Rules match, which is just a last man standing match, with the stipulation being that Matt Hardy had to leave AEW if he lost. The match ended up going 9 minutes at the event, which you think is pretty short for a last man standing match, and it went this short for good reason. Early on in the match, Sammy Guevara and Matt Hardy both spilled through a table from a high spot, and Matt hit his head badly on the concrete upon landing, and from here, Matt Hardy was completely out of it. He first of all had to get back to his feet before the 10 count so he didn't lose the match because he was booked to win, and despite the fact that the entire world could see how injured Matt was, he was somehow deemed fit to continue the match by AEW Medical and somehow slugged his way to a victory, but it was an absolutely uncomfortable match as Matt Hardy was visibly concussed and visibly injured and there's absolutely no reason that this match should have gone on. AEW received a lot of criticism for letting this match continue, and rightfully so, and that criticism included Rebby Hardy, who was very livid about the fact that Matt Hardy, her husband, was injured in this match and made to continue. Let me be absolutely effing clear, there is nothing entertaining about a concussion. Shame on everyone in that goddamn building. She also posted a screenshot of text messages between herself and Matt, where Matt is talking to her about saying he's about to begin the match, and Rebby saying, don't be dumb, and then getting angry saying, what the F, you practically cleared that table, what the F, Matt, what the goddamn F, in response to when the botch took place. And then AEW's handling of the situation was also really weird because it was first stated that he doesn't have a concussion, but then he came out on the very next Dynamite saying he's healing from his injury and he'll be back and stuff. Well, what injury? I thought he didn't have a concussion. Overall, it just wasn't a really good look at all for AEW, and Matt Hardy did eventually return and would face Sammy Guevara once more, this time at full gear in an ultimate deletion match, which he won to end the feud once and for all. On November 30th, 2021, Big Swall announced that her and AEW had mutually parted ways after she had spent two years with the company. Big Swall's statement got a good response, and it seemed like Big Swall had left AEW on good terms. But then on New Year's Eve of that year, everything kicked off. Big Swall hosted a call-in podcast where she talked about some of the issues she had with AEW and their lack of diversity, saying the following, I do not beat around the bush when it comes to diversity in my people. There is no representation, truly, and when there is, does not come across in the black community as genuine at all. And I don't know why everybody is so afraid to accept it or say it, but it's not a good look. What happens is, you have this wonderful company that treats people like family, but there is nobody that looks like me that is represented at the top. They are not in the room with them. They're not helping to necessarily influence decisions, but to explain why certain slang, why they are certain words that shouldn't be said. There is no one else who can explain our culture and experience except for us. I believe that AEW is making better strides than before, but a couple of things need to be fixed. You have to be able to call people out because not everything is not perfect. I hope they listen to us with an open heart and not just, ah, oh, she's just saying this because of XYZ. I genuinely want them to succeed. I love art, I love to be creative, and I love wrestling, and I want it to succeed, and I want the people in it to succeed if they are genuine people. I want WWE to succeed. I just want wrestling to flourish, and I don't want it to be a long-forgotten Tartarian sport where in the old days we used to wrestle. I want nothing but the best but I also want the change in application to happen. With promises you made to be diverse, I want to see that. Not just with black people. I want to see a dark-skinned Latina or Latino or just something. More Asians. I feel like Asians, Indians do not get love. They just don't. It's such a big gap. I hate the fact that I turn on the TV and it's the same stuff over and over again. Like the Truman Show. Hopefully, they get the message. 
and they would get the message, but Big Swole would definitely not receive the response she wanted, as Tony Khan would respond to her. The top two AEW execs are Brown, me and Mega, Jade, Bowens, Caster, Dante, Nyla, Isaiah and Mark Quinn all won on TV this month. The TBS title tournament has been very diverse. I let Swole's contract expire as I felt her wrestling wasn't good enough. AEW Rampage Street Fight tonight! And wow, this tweet did not go down well. This tweet caused an absolute stir on wrestling Twitter. 6,000 quote tweets. Good God. People were not happy, and whilst lots of the AEW locker room would jump to Tony Khan's defense, one wrestler in the AEW locker room did not do that, and that was Leo Rush. Leo Rush responded on Twitter saying the following, I'm not cool with any of this S, to be honest. If nobody says something, because I will, because this is effed up and now I'm pissed. Apologize, at Tony Khan, at AEW. Tony Khan would never release that apology, but it does appear though that him and Leo Rush did have a talk and a meeting behind the scenes, because Leo Rush posted the following on social media just a couple days later. I want this to be clear, I do not consider this to be a diversity issue, and I at no point have thought or said that AEW or Tony is racist. We can all clearly see that wrestling as a whole and the AEW roster is perpetually diverse. The issue at hand was a racial insensitivity issue. Having spoken to Tony and Mega, we have discussed the endeavours to further understand the struggles of the black community. I am grateful to be able to understand more about Tony and Mega's own ethnic backgrounds, and glad that they are actively seeking input from an African American perspective. I am proud to work for a boss and company that try to make these strides in social equality. I look forward to working with Tony to keep making steps towards positive change. I pray that 2022 is a year of positive change in all aspects. Happy New Year and God bless. Hashtag be the change. So it seemed like all was well and good, but then some weird stuff started going down, because at the time Leo Rush was in a storyline with Dante Martin and Team Taz, but then it seemed as though he was replaced in the storyline by Jay Lethal as he never appeared on AEW on the January 12th 2022 episode of Dynamite and Jay Lethal appeared to be Dante Martin's new teammate. And then 10 days later on January 22nd, Leo Rush posted on social media that he was leaving AEW and becoming a free agent as his contract was expiring on February 14th, 2022. I'm not at all trying to speculate that anything that went down is linked to Leo Rush's departure, but it is a strange series of events and overall, the entire AEW and Tony Khan vs Big Swole situation was very, very messy. Last year, AEW took the headlines of the wrestling dirt sheets by storm with the news of the CM Punk vs the Elite backstage fight, but AEW from its very first year have had a very turbulent history with many backstage fights going down and scraps going down between wrestlers. The first known backstage fight took place at All Out 2019 between Sadie Gibbs and B Priestley. The heat between the two originated from Sadie Gibbs and Will Ospreay having heat. Will Ospreay at the time was dating B Priestley. Sadie Gibbs and B Priestley were both in the Women's Casino Battle Royale and you could clearly see that they were just weren't getting along in the ring and were stiffing each other. And apparently some stuff went down backstage between the two of them. Excalibur and Jimmy Havoc apparently got into a scrap at a restaurant which saw Excalibur getting Jimmy Havoc in a chokehold and making him pass out. What? Oi Excalibur, why'd you not book me on them PWG shows? And then Samu Guevara is just seems to be a menace backstage. He got into a fight with Eddie Kingston after fat shaming him, and then got into a fight with Andrade after they spent all day on Twitter going at it and pretty much warned the whole public that the fight was going to happen, and it still happened and no one stopped it. There's of course the Punk vs the Elite stuff that went down, and there's talks of Thunder Rosa having heat backstage with the other women. It seems as though the AEW locker room has been a lot more well behaved since the Punk vs the Elite stuff, and let's just hope they can keep that up because you you need a healthy locker room to have the best product possible. But also at the same time, bring back CM Punk because it's CM Punk. Bring him back. 